What's good, Wizards fans? It's your host, The Real, Ed Oliver, Brandon Scott. We're here with part two with special guest Carito Parks. We're going to do some grades and off-season recap. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you guys for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today we have part two with special guest Karita Parks from Double Take Sports. It is still her birthday week, so we just want to get continued with the all season grade. So this is going to be the first grade question here for trades um, or really just transactions uh, that the Wizards made this season. So a lot of people were kind of had mixed feelings with bringing Kyle Kuzma back. Um, they brought him back on a a four-year deal, $100 million. Um, what was your thoughts on that, and what grade would you give that? And also, you you did say that you have been to some of the pressers. What were your thoughts on their – after you answered that question, what were your thoughts on their introductory press conference? Because that's the one where I meant to say that they showed up late to that one. Um, and then what are your thoughts on the the new the big three of new their front office, the, the big three front office so far? But starting off with Kyle Kuz, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, Krito, you're on mute. My bad. No. But um, prior to them re-signing Kyle Kuzma, I did a couple of other appearances, and I was asked, you know, what I would think would happen with him in the offseason. And I had a strong feeling that they would bring back Kyle Kuzma, and especially when they traded Bradley Beal and Christoph Porzingis. I felt like it was a possibility that they would bring Kyle Kuzma back. And I also felt like if you were to bring anyone back from that big three, it would be Kyle Kuzma. Just last season, if Kyle Kuzma, he was something special. I'll be honest with you. He was something special on the court, off the court. He just had that presence, that swag. Don't tell nobody. Well, I'm about to tell everybody. But I was thinking, you know, if Brad wasn't the franchise player, Kyle kind of had that ability to kind of take on that role. Um, and, and so he is taking on a bigger role. I don't know if I would call him the franchise player, but he is taking on a bigger role. He was like, you know, run the offense through me. And now he's going to have that opportunity. So I'm not mad at that decision. If I'm being quite honest with you, I feel like he did still need a veteran presence and he's got that killer instinct. I like a lot about that decision. I don't, I don't know why everyone has mixed feelings, but just from my observations, if there was one person I thought they should bring back, it was Kyle Kuz. Mm. Yeah, the pink sweaters, the the crazy model fashion clothes that he wears. I mean, he but he can Kyle, also play. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, the bobblehead night, the hats. You know, he definitely had a big big influence uh, for the fan base. Definitely a fan favorite. Um, now, the mixed feelings, the argument against it is him taking a lot of shots, taking shots away from the young guys because they are in a rebuilding phase. Um, the national consensus is kind of like, what are they doing? Why are this, that this raises their win total, that they're kind of going back into that middle build instead of bottoming out. And personally, I don't think Kyle Kuzma really raises the win total that much where they would be back and kind of into that middle build. I do think he will help them win games. But they do need a veteran out there, like you said. And they had to pay somebody. They couldn't just have a bunch of small con- – like one big contract in Jordan Poole. They did have to pay somebody to meet um, that salary cap threshold. And I do like that they brought him back because they can still flip him at the deadline for assets. I feel like you can get a first-round pick from him for him. And I do think he's a good veteran leader. He's done a good job of you know mentoring Denny, some of the other young guys, taking them under their wing. And he has been a vocal leader. Like we were looking for a vocal leader last year. Um, and Brad kind of – he's just not really that guy as a vocal leader. And uh, mm-hmm. Kyle Kuzma stepped up and did that more than a, a lot of guys on the roster. So, and he's clutch. He's a clutch player. He's hit some big threes. Not he's not scared to take some big shots down the stretch. Yeah, all that. That's exactly exactly the same thing I saw. Mm. And what what grade would you give that that resigning? So for me, I gave it an A. That mm. because, like I said, coming into 
coming into this, I thought he was the one that they should keep. And they did that. So. Well, you know, they say the proof is in the pudding, man. Uh, you know, if you look at last year, you know, when the offense flowed through him and K or KP, it was just smoother. You know, mm-hmm. I know Bradley Bills in Phoenix now, but let's, let's throw out the obvious here. You know, when the offense went through him, it tended to be a black hole. You know, you know, too ISO heavy. Uh, e, you mentioned clutch coups. Bradley Bill wasn't very clutch. You know, bounce the ball off his foot, you know, multiple times, you know, <laughs> turning over in clutch. You know, so if you look at who was supposed to be the leader, obviously your franchise guy at the time, Super Max Bill, but Kyle Kuzma was – here's one thing we noticed in, you know, uh, me and E, we went to a couple games last year together, and we both noticed this one thing, which is, you know, when uh, Bradley Bill's out and when they got in huddles, usually your, your guy, your biggest voice, whether you in street clothes or you in uniform, needs to be in the huddle talking to the young guys. You saw Kyle Kuzma there, but you never saw Bradley Bill there. He was always off on the side, head the down. Bench. So, yeah. oh, absolutely. So right. Kyle, Kuz- Kyle Kuzma, just the fact that you brought up his leadership was a big reason why I had no problem with him coming back because he's productive. And two, you know, he, he he's that veteran presence. Him and Jordan Poole, look, they both have championship pedigree. They both have rings. So they know they've been part of teams. They know what it takes to get to that point. So if you indeed want to build this into a championship contender, you need guys who've been there and done that. So I'm with you. Definitely an A. And Kuz wanted to be, he wanted to be that guy. So here's his opportunity. Yeah, I'm hoping he kind of retires a sweater, though. I'm, you know, I'm just. <laughs> he probably will. You know, you know, his app is about to be real wild now because he's like. <laughs> yeah, he got the hundred million dollars now. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think he will be a good leader. He's played well with Denny. He's played well with young guys before, mm-hmm. and um, I think he can be a good point forward. And um, you know if he plays well, there's a lot of teams that are going to be asking for his services. There's going to be a lot of com- uh, a lot of playoff contenders looking for a guy like him because he can fit anywhere. He can be a three and D guy. He can play sh- stretch four, point forward. So there's a lot of th- a lot of I think there's going to be a lot of trade suitors for him if he does play well um, to get it to certainly for him to get his value up. Um, so we're going to get into some other uh, moves for the off season, but before we do get into that, th- today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. So let's, let's slide back into it. So before we get into some grades, I'm interested in what you think about the young guys. If you look at uh, Denny Avia, Cole Kispert, Johnny Davis, and Bilal Koulibaly, um, who do, in your mind, who has the best chance to take that step to be an all-star? Ooh. <laughs> an all-star? Shoot, you know, as if, much if as any I, of them, <laughs> I, as much as I like Corey Kispert and Denny Abdia, I don't know that I see all star potential. Johnny Davis, in my opinion, he's gotten a lot better. I, I loved his aggressiveness at Summer League, but to me, he still has a ways to go. Uh, Bilal Kuobali, I mean, it's just, I just haven't seen much of him. So if anybody, maybe him, because he's so young. I was very impressed. I will say coming into, obviously, coming into the draft, I didn't know as much about him. But I was impressed with him at Summer League. He was not scared. I mean, I think the first game you saw a little bit of, you know, I, I say shyness, but after that, I didn't feel like he was scared. He showed potential on defense. I got to see more of what he can do offensively. So maybe Bilal, but I would have to see more of him. Yeah, I agree. I think he's very raw. But I think that if you look at his intangibles, he could very well be that guy who could take that step to be an all-star. Yeah, that's a, it's a tough question because, I mean, <laughs> they're, they're solid role guys. But yeah. I just don't see it to where they take that step. Now, if Denny has a look, if Denny comes in and shoots 38% for three, maybe we're cooking just because you know he can defend at a high level. But 
you know, like, you know, we just said it that you know, Corey Kispert, he is what he is. He's a shooter. You can, you know, he can cut. He's got the IQ, but he is what he is. Uh, Johnny Davis. Okay. No, I was just saying he's Corey. I was just adding on. I was like, and he's consistent. Mm. Oh, he's very consistent. No, I'm very mm-hmm. consistent because you know you know exactly what you're going to get from him. But yeah. Johnny Davis is just like I said. I, me personally, I just want to see him more efficient. You see the score. Now he, he's not going to blow past you with a first step. He just doesn't have that speed. Um, it took him a little bit to kind of get acclimated to the speed of the NBA. But if he can, you know, act, work on some moves, especially in the post, I think he'll be all right. Now, one thing he needs to stop doing commercials because I, I, I just. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to get his money Brandon. Wait, I don't know that I've seen, have I, I don't think I've seen Johnny Davis's commercials who's he doing um, commercials for it was, was a lawyer he did Greenberg um, and Betterman there you go yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look I'm gonna have to look for that yeah you gotta check it out because uh <laughs> he looks scared on there so <laughs> well but, that um, would surprise me we had to get he you know we had to get over that last season <laughs> Yeah, you definitely gotta check it out because it's definitely in the end. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass Mike's man. Um, yeah, to answer the question, I say zero. Um, now Blau maybe is still very very early, far away, um, right? <laughs> very very early. So I, I won't I won't give an answer for him. But honestly, right now Corey, I mean he's 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 a role player. He's a he's a a, a shooting specialist. So you know you look at guys like um, you know Wesley Matthews or Duncan Robinson. Um, Doug McDermott, Kyle Korver, Mike Miller. Um, I already, I already said Wesley, Reggie Bullock, guys like that. I think he'll be in that range of shooting specialists where he's a, a great floor spacer. I think that's going to be his role, but he'll never be an all star. Um, Denny, great rotational player, great defensive player. Um, but right now we're just debating on whether he's going to get another contract. So when you're an all-star, you're going to get a contract, you know? So um, he has been too up and down for me so far. When he's up, he is up, but then when he's down, he is down. Yeah. So we've seen turbo, you know, and then we've seen, you know, some inconsistencies from Denny for sure on the offensive side of the ball. Um, obviously he's got, he's got to work on his left hand, finishing around the rim. Now the, the left hand thing, Jalen Brown doesn't have a left hand, but he just got a max deal. But Jalen Brown is just a whole different athlete and scorer. So that's why, you know, he earned that deal. Um, but, yeah, right now I don't see any all-stars. Um, and then Johnny Davis, has a, he just has a long way to go. I, I love his aggressiveness, aggressiveness and his confidence in Summer League. I love that so much. Coming from where he was in Summer League, where he struggled to get by guys. He could barely move. Um, looked like he was in quicksand a little bit last year in Summer League. So he made a huge leap in Summer League. So I was happy to see that. But I don't see any all-stars at this point. Um, but as far as the next trade, um, what were your thoughts and grade for the Porzingis trade? They traded Porzingis to the Celtics, which I really dislike because I hate the, the Celtics got better with him. Um, and I really dislike the Celtics uh, just with the uh, series with John Wall versus Isaiah Thomas and the bad blood we had there. But um, And then the Grizzlies got two first-round picks, and we got Tyus Jones. So what were your thoughts on that trade? So that one, I give a C for – kind of what you mentioned, because we traded him to a team in the Eastern Conference who's already been a problem for us. So, right, we gave them Porzingis, made made them better with him, and then we got to see him. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. We're going to have to see him this season. So, And then in addition to that, Porzingis, I would have loved to just get more for him. But, you know, once again, I think that was just one of those situations where they had to offload some folks and they got what they can. But I would have loved to get more for Porzingis and I would have not wanted to see him in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because he had a player option for thirty six million dollars. I didn't I didn't see him getting thirty six million dollars from anywhere else. But he opted in. They traded him. He didn't have to opt in. But once again, I think if he opted out, he wasn't going to get anything around thirty six. I look at the contract he got from the Celtics. But the fact that they did get something for him was good. They got Tyus Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, and with his injury history, you know, not no teams are gonna give him a first round pick. So um you give that a C. I, I, I give it about a I give it about a B minus because they did get something for him when he could have walked for nothing. Fair. B minus is almost a C. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think a big reason why he went to Boston is because remember he was supposed um what trade broke down it was it was that uh that Clippers trade broke down where was it the Clippers? 
Yeah, because Brogdon was injured. Yeah, because they, they had concerns that. about we were Brogdon. Finally, going to get a first round pick. I think. Yeah, we were finally. It was going to be the last pick of the first round. But we I think they had like thirty minutes to get it done because it was uh they had till midnight or something. Oh, the like midnight, that, right? yeah, yeah. They had that midnight deadline. Sure did. Mm-hmm. So I get it, you know, kind of desperation. But I, I'm with you guys. I mean, I hate Boston, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> what and a then passion. The, the last trade that we'll grade here is uh, trading Chris Paul, who's 38, mm-hmm. for Jordan Poole and a first round pick. Oh, I like that one. That I give that an A because yeah. <laughs> you know. Being able to trade Chris Paul for Jordan Poole, first round pick. I mean, I, I like that. We knew that they were going to move Chris Paul. We didn't know what they would be able to get. Also, especially with the history Chris Paul kind of has with the Warriors, the fact that we were able to move him on over there. Um, and I like what we got for it. Like we talked about earlier, just the potential that Jordan Poole brings to this team. They weren't going to keep Chris Paul anyway. He didn't make sense here. He probably didn't want to be here. So at least we, you know, were able to get some good value off of that trade. So I like that one, and I give that one an A. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had to, I had to give that one an A, too. When you trade a 38-year-old Chris Paul who's mm-hmm. declining, um, who kind of moves like he does in the State Farm commercials, spring up commercials, <laughs> Brandon, um, and you get a 24-year-old guy with, with – with definitely a lot of potential in Jordan Poole. I think that's a win. The, the 20, 30 first round pick, it may never happen. It may never convey. I know it's seven years from now, um, but that's the, that's the only first round pick they got. They didn't even get a first round pick for Bradley Bill, but they finally did get one. And you get a really good player in Jordan Poole. Mm-hmm. I mean, shoot, it goes beyond Jordan Poole. I mean, look, Patrick Baldwin Jr. is raw, but I mean, his stroke. I'm just trying to tell you, he can shoot the ball. He had a little weight, man. We're talking about something. And then, I mean, Rollins. You know, in summer league, Rollins could push the pace. And he's got a little shot on him too. So I think, oh, absolutely. I think about all the trades, you know, barring you know all the picks and everything, as far as getting young quality talent, this was the best trade out of the whole offseason because you got three guys who can definitely ball if you give them time to develop. So yeah, I absolutely, I'll give it an A plus. Mm-hmm. That is true. They did include Pat Bowen on there, Ryan Rollins, and I think they're, they're two young guys that. um have a lot of potential. They may play in the G League this year, but I think Ryan Rollins can definitely get a lot of playing time. And Pat Baldwin showed some flashes in the summer league too. And with this team, you just never know. Sometimes the injury bug hits, and so I like that we do have some depth. And so that's a good point, Brandon, because we haven't talked a lot about Pat Baldwin Jr. and Ryan Rollins, and we saw them in summer league. They did well. So I like the depth that they bring to the team. We may, hopefully, we don't need them, but you just never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I got a, some quick questions for you, real quick, before we roll up. Um, okay. In history, what is the best trade the Wizards have made, and what is the worst? Oh gosh, in Wizards history, I, you know I'm from Florida, right? So I, <laughs> <laughs> my history starts kind of when I moved here. The best trade they made, woo. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I know the best trade, honestly. Um, but the worst trade, <laughs> mm, people might not agree with me because you know that he was on like come kind of declining with his injuries. But that John Wall trade, that was like just I don't know. I think it was like a gut punch a little bit for a lot of for a lot of people. I understand. Um, I do understand, but. I, People still are not over that trade in my to this day. I don't think I'm still over it. I mean, that was my guy, man. So <laughs> I'm not over it. Um, best and worst free agent signing. Best and worst. Oh gosh. I, you hit me with these hard questions. Best and worst free agent signing. Best, best, best. I mean, in recent times, I'm trying to think of a free agent who has stayed. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Like, I'm like, you hit me with these hard questions. <laughs> fair enough. I got one final question for you. Um, we're going way back on this one. Wait, wait, wait. But I want to know what was your best and worst free agent. Oh, signing? put me on the spot. Okay. Well, because um, you asked. So I feel like you have a thought. Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going way back for the worst trade. Mitch Richmond. Easy. Oh, I C. Webb, the Sacramento for Mitch Richmond. That was just trash. Um, best trade. 
Ah, man. Now, look, he asking questions. I know, right? Um, I got to say the same trade, though. Um, Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I haven't gotten over John Wall, but if Russ, I mean, Russ, he, I mean, you can really argue that Bradley Bill got paid because of Russ. I mean, it all, you know, had a career you year that was points. the best trade? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. Because, uh, I mean, you look at it, I love me some John Wall, but, I mean, the injuries, you know, they got good value for a guy who, you know, two major injuries. So, while I didn't like him leaving D.C., I think they got good value for him. I mean, outside the pick, because I don't know if we're ever going to get that pick. But um, real quick, I'm going way back for this one. Yes or no? Without Michael Jordan, would Kwame Brown been a twenty and ten guy? <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say no because I feel like Michael Jordan's that type of player who makes everyone around him better. So that, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. And then yeah, let I'm me just... let me let me go with. I'm gonna answer your questions too. I'll let you guys because gotcha. I, I got some answers too. I want to. Well, that was my answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Now, to, got- to the best trade, speaking of Kwame mm-hmm. Brown, so Ernie Grunfeld, I know he gets a lot of flag, but this was a good trade. He traded Karan Butler. He traded Kwame Brown to get Karan Butler. Karan Butler turned into an all star player. So I think that's a win. You got Chucky Atkins as well. Um, so trading Kwame Brown for Karan Butler of the real big three for the Wizards with Anton James and uh, Gilbert Arenas. I think that was a win. Their best free agent signing, of course, I think that's Gilbert Arenas as well. Gilbert Arenas, even though he flipped a coin, and that's how he chose that's how he chose the Wizards. Uh, <laughs> that's certainly a win too. The worst signing, I mean, there's so many. I mean, you could you we could be on here for the next hour talking <laughs> about the worst free agent signings. I mean, you can talk about Jan Mahimi, uh, you know, Dwight Howard with the back injury, the glute injury. He barely played for the that's Wizards. That's just when I came in to uh-huh. so in Florida. Be honest, you don't hear nothing about the Wizards mm. in Florida. In Florida, okay, yeah. so I came in in that Di- Dwight Howard time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a terrible signing. Yami, yeah. yeah. CJ Miles was pretty bad. We didn't pay him much, but that was pretty bad. He barely played. Um, so there's some, and then Spencer. We traded for Spencer Dinwiddie, but the way that worked out was pretty darn awful. Um, and then what was the other question you asked? Uh, without MJ, would Kwame Brown been a 20 and 10 guy? No, I don't think so, honestly. Even though MJ, really? MJ <laughs> no, I don't see 20 and 10. It, but Kwame, I, I watched a couple of highlights of Kwame. He had a couple of good games. He did have some potential, but I don't think MJ helped him. That is true. I don't think MJ did him a, a great service for sure. And you look at you look at MJ as a GM right now with the Hornets, like they drafted so many bad players like Adam Morrison. They drafted him. Um, they drafted like Mike, Tyler Zeller, Michael K. No, Gilchrist, yeah. yep. Bobcats are just so awful. Um, and Michael Jordan is selling the team. And even he he kind of got ran out of town here as a GM too. So uh, he traded Richard Hamilton for Jerry Stackhouse. And look where Richard Hamilton, he went to the Pistons oh. championship. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can go to you can go a long list with, with, with MJ. They're making yeah. Sense. I got to say this, man, before we roll, man, he definitely been a 2010 guy. I, if, if he was properly developed. Now, I don't think he should have went no one overall, but with that draft class, man, I mean, it was just a terrible draft class. But if he was properly developed, man, I think he would definitely been a 2010 guy. And a lot of people calling him a bust, man. He still got paid. How, I mean, how many million dollars was he able to get paid in his career? That's a win in my book. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what, what's the minimum in the NBA? I don't even have to play. I can hand water out, man. I'm just saying, like – he got paid, so that's a dub. So, yeah, I think he'd be a 2010 guy. That's just what I'm rolling with. Mm. Yeah, I know Kwame would like you on, on his podcast for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, last grade, um, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, what was your grade for the draft with drafting Blau? They traded up to, with the Pacers. Uh, they gave the second-round picks for Blau Kulabali. Was there anybody else that you thought they possibly could have taken, and what's your thoughts on Blau so far? You know, I at first I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know. But like I said, after I saw him in summer league, I felt like, okay, based on what it looks like, they're, the fact that they're trying to go with a younger team, he has a great upside. So I give that like a, I say an A minus, and I say only the minus because I wasn't sure at first, but I think that he'll pan out for the Wizards. I actually do think he'll pan out for the Wizards because, you know, sometimes you can draft those, draft those guys and have high hopes for them and they don't. 
But I just like what I saw from him. And like I said, he doesn't seem to have that fear. Like, we'll see what happens when he has to be on the court with uh, some more established guys. But I think that you're going to see him work. Right. Yeah, I, I think he's, he is a hard worker. He's got a good motor, super athletic. He had a chase down block in every game in the summer league. He had a really good game against the Thunder, too. So um, I think he has a lot of potential. Definitely has to work on an offense, offensive game. But I think defensively, he can definitely be a good player in his rookie season. Agreed. Absolutely. I completely agree with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. Krita, did you have anything that you wanted to plug? Yes, so be sure to follow me on Twitter, all platforms, all social media platforms, actually, at Carita C. Parts. You can also follow my company, Double Take Sports. We cover NFL, WNBA, NBA, and other sports as well. That's at DBL Take Sports and DoubleTakeSports.com. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of Commanders content for football season coming up. Yes, so. Commanders content coming up. I'm doing a little more. I know folks in this area might not like it, but I'm doing a little more Ravens too. So you're going <laughs> to see a little bit of both. <laughs> the enemy. Uh, I know. So I hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just want to thank you guys for listening. Making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. Make sure you guys check it out. On all, check us out on all platforms. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. Hell to the Wizards. Peace. You are. Hell to the Wizards.